hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in this video we are going to be looking at the entrance examination into the national advanced school of engineering in douala we are going to be solving the mathematics paper for the 2021 session um, we are going to be solving a particular exercise in that examination paper because that particular exercise actually um, caused a lot of problems as per the percentage of students that voted for me to solve that particular exercise so before we solve that exercise i'm going to give you how the paper was structured now the paper was structured into four different exercises the first exercise was on the topic probability the second exercise which is what you are going to be solving today that is um, on the topic integral calculus the third exercise was on two topics you have conics and then you have complex transformations now the fourth exercise was divided into two parts the first part part a was um, divided into functions and sequences and then part b you had integral calculus and then limits okay so in today's video we are going to be looking at the second exercise which was on the topic integral calculus combined with functions and then combined with, combined with series all right so this part particular exercise was very very technical to solve but i believe by the end of this video you're going to see how to solve exercises of that sort so for those of you who are just joining us for your first time and able to subscribe to the channel we turn on your notifications so that whenever videos are uploaded you always be notified all right so let's get started Okay, so exercise two in the competitive entrance examination into the National Advanced School of Engineering Douala, we also refer to it as Polytechnic Douala. Now I'm going to display the equation and then we are going to solve the various parts together. So A, let's consider a function f defined and continuous on an interval, a closed interval negative a to a. Show that if f is an even function, then the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. Let's consider the function capital F which is odd and 2 pi periodic defined from arrow onto arrow by capital F of x equal to x if 0 is less than or equal to x and less than pi on 2 and pi minus x if pi on 2 is less than or equal to x less than pi we denote a of n of f equal to 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x sine x dx okay b show that for any integer small n we have a of n of f is equal to 2 divided by pi times 1 minus negative 1 to the power n all of that times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of x times the sine of nx dx and c deduce the value of a of 2n of f all right d show that for any integer small n a of 2n plus 1 of f is equal to 4 times negative 1 to the power n all divided by pi into 2n plus 1 all squared e it is admitted that for any real number x we have capital F of x is equal to the sum from n equal to 0 to infinity of a of n of f times the sine of nx. f show that the sum from n equal to 0 to infinity of 1 divided by 2n plus 1 all squared is equal to pi squared divided by 8. And finally, deduce that the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is equal to pi squared on 6. And the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the power n minus 1 divided by n squared is equal to pi squared divided by 12. Alright guys, so that was the question that came in the entrance examination in so Polytechnic Douala in the year 2021. Exercise number 2. Now the problem was allocated for 5 points. Yeah, 5 points though you see it is a bit long but you should bear in mind that that is a francophone setting so the they are more considerate with max they don't just distribute max anyhow like we anglophones do 
all right so the next thing we are going to do is that you are going to analyze each part of these questions and then i'm going to present to you what was required to be presented to the examiners all right guys so i think um i can begin with the analyzation and the presentation of my proposed solutions to the sub questions under exercise two that we are looking at today okay so before that i'm going to give you guys a piece of advice especially to the guys who are writing the entrance examination into the national advanced school of engineering Douala this year so first you guys should be alerted that you're writing this sunday that is the 31st of july 2022 now students are advised to follow the polytechnic year only 2021 math paper one and paper two solutions on this youtube channel students are also advised to follow the various lectures on further maths um, topics like complex geometry sequences and series curve sketching and all the rest on this channel and finally the math organization wishes all the candidates the best in this year entrance examination Okay, so without wasting much of your time, I'm going to begin straight away with the analyzation and the presentation of my proposed solutions to those various exercises. So, A part, you have been given a function f which is continuous on an interval which is closed. And then, um, we have been asked to show that the integral from negative a to a of that function with respect to x is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to a of that function with respect to x provided the function is an even function all right so the keywords i have highlighted them in um, a different color so the first is continuous next you have been given the interval and then next you have been told that the function is even okay so first of all since the function is continuous then we are going to split this integral into two different integrals and then we are going to use a substitution since the function is even and then we see how to prove this relationship all right so my integral from negative a to a of my function is equal to the integral from negative a to zero of the function plus the integral from zero to a of the function y because the function is continuous in this interval meaning that for all values of x in the interval negative a to a which is close the function is always continuous it means there is no point of discontinuity that is why this integral here is going this um, left hand side here is going to be equivalent to breaking this um, integral into integral from negative a to zero and the integral from zero to a but if the function was discontinuous at a certain point in this interval then this is not going to be possible but since we have been told that the function is continuous in this interval then this is possible now the next thing we are going to do is maybe we let this first integral to be i1 and then this second integral to be i2 now we are going to concentrate on the integral i1 that is the integral from negative a to zero of f of x dx now we are going to do a substitution t equal to negative x doing that we differentiate both sides doing a substitution means that we want to change the variable from the x wall to our new wall which is the t wall so all the um, components here which are in function of x we are going to change to um, components in function of t so we are going to change the function from f of x to f of t we are going to change dx to dt and we are also going to change the limits of of integration because the limits here are um, in terms that's in function of x because x equal to negative a right up to x equal to zero all right so if i let my t to be negative x it means that my dt will be equal to negative dx just by differentiating both sides of the equation now it means that my integral i1 now i will need to change my limits of integration here the lower bound x is equal to negative a what would be t t is going to be negative into negative a so we get our t to be a that's the lower bound now the upper bound when x is zero our t is zero as well so the t begins from a right up to zero now f of x becomes f of negative t because our t is equal to negative x so our x will be equal to negative t 
so my f of x becomes f of negative t now my dx becomes negative dt because if i if i divide both sides by the negative sign in this equation here i'm going to get my dx to be equal to negative dt so it means my i1 is equal to negative times the integral from a right up to zero of f of negative t dt but we have been told that the function f is an even function it means that f of negative t is equal to f of t that's the pure definition of what an even function is all right now we are also going to use a property that the integral from a to zero of that's negative the integral from a to zero of this function is the same as the integral from zero to a of this function so i switch the limit of integration the, the the two positions and then the negative sign cancels so with that we just get our i1 to be the integral from 0 to a of f of t dt but my x and t are called dummy variables and by definition the integral from 0 to a of f of t dt is equivalent to the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx so with that it means that uh my integral from negative a right up to a of f of x dx which is my i1 is equal to the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx now what is our original integral so from here our original integral is i1 plus i2 but clearly our i1 is equal to i2 because this is i2 it is the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx and our i1 which is this integral is still the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx so with that we add the two integrals it means adding two of them since they are similar it just gives us two times any of them so it means the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is equal to two times the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx which is what we were required to prove so we are done with the first part of the problem Alright, so the second part of the problem, we have been given an instruction. First, we consider a function capital F, which is an odd function and has a period of 2 pi. It is defined from arrow onto arrow by this piecewise function. Capital F of x is equal to small x if x is in the interval 0 to pi on 2 and 0 is included. It is equal to pi minus x if x is in the interval pylon 2 right up to pi with pylon 2 included now we denote a of n of f to be 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi right up to pi of capital f of x times the sine of nx dx now the first question under this description is asking us to show that for any integer small n our a our a of n of f is equal to 2 divided by pi times 1 minus negative 1 to the power n times the integral from 0 right up to pi on 2 of x times the sine of nx dx okay so to do this um first of all we are going to verify the parity of the function f of x the sine of nx meaning we are going to verify the parity of this function now the parity of the function is just to tell the examiner if the function is odd or the function is even or the function is neither odd nor even so by the definition of an even function or, or of an odd function if capital f of x is an odd function then capital f of negative x is equal to negative capital f of x all right so the sine function clearly is an odd function by the definition because the sine of negative x is equal to negative the sine of x so this therefore the sine of negative nx will be equal to negative the sign of nx n is a natural number all right so with that um since we've been told that the function capital f is odd that's why this first definition was given so it means that f of negative x times the sign of negative x is equal to since your f of negative x is equal to negative f of x it means that just this guy here becomes negative f of x now the sign function is also an odd function so the sign of negative nx is negative the sign of nx so i replace the sign of negative nx with negative the sign of nx 
now this negative sign and this negative sign multiplies to give us a positive sign and at the end we have capital f of x times the sign of nx so we can conclude that f of negative x sine of negative nx is the same as f of x sine of nx so our function f of x sine of nx is an even function by the definition so by the definition of an even function um if i let let's just say um all of this function here to be g of x that is capital f of x times the sine of nx if it is g of x then if g of x is odd if g of x is even then g of negative x is equal to negative g of x this left hand side here is g of negative x and this right hand side here is just g of x since they are equivalent then we can draw a conclusion that g of x which is capital f of x times the sine of nx is an even function nevertheless we can also um, see that the, 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 the product of two odd functions gives us an even function that's the definition since your function f is odd and the function sine is odd it means that the function f times sine is even because we are doing the product of two odd functions okay so previously we proved this relationship that if my small f is an even function such that it is continuous in the interval negative a to a then the integral from negative a to a of f of x is two times the integral from zero to a of f of x now the function f of x the sine of nx we need to verify if it is um continuous in the interval negative pi right up to pi clearly it is continuous in that interval so with that we can conclude that my a of n of f is equal to 1 divided by pi times um, the integral from negative pi to pi of my function here will be the same as the integral from um will be the same as 2 all over pi because in this case we have about 2 outside here and then we are going to be integrating from 0 right up to pi because comparing this and this we just see that our small f of x is equal to capital f of x times the sine of nx and then our a is simply pi so integrating from negative a to a is the same as integrating from negative pi to pi so since it is an even function and it is continuous in this interval negative pi to pi then the integral that's a of n of f is going to be equivalent to 2 divided by pi because originally here was 1 divided by pi but since we are using this property we are now integrating from 0 right up to pi so we need to multiply that integral by 2 so we have 2 all over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of capital f of x times the sine of nx all right so with that we can um do a substitution or nevertheless we just replace what our capital f of x is now we are integrating from 0 to pi but our capital f of x is defined in two cases it is not just defined from 0 to pi it is defined from 0 to pi on 2 and then from pi on 2 right up to pi so i'm going to split this integral into two different into two different integrals clearly we see that the function capital f of x is continuous at pi on 2 why because the limit as x tends to zero uh, sorry as x tends to pi on 2 from below is pi on 2 the limit as x tends to pi on 2 from above is also pi on 2 and f of pi on 2 is pi on 2 so the function is continuous at pi on 2 so it permits us to disintegrate this integral into two different integrals that is from zero right up to pi on two and then from pi on two right up to pi now from zero right up to pi on two the function is equal to x so i replace my capital f of x with x then times the sine of nx now from pi on two right up to pi the function capital f of x is equivalent to pi minus x so i replace it with pi minus x and then i multiply with the sine of nx remember we have our 2 divided by pi so it multiplies both integrals now we are going to concentrate on this integral because we can see that our final proof has the integral from 0 right up to pi on 2 of x times the sine of nx so the final proof has 
this first integral already we can see the 2 divided by pi outside so we need to concentrate on this second integral that is 2 divided by pi the integral from pi on 2 to pi of pi minus x times the sine of nx dx we work with it and then we see the relationship that it has with the first integral all right so i'm going to post i1 to be the integral to be 2 divided by pi times the integral from pi on 2 to pi of pi minus x times the sine of nx now we are going to write along with integration by substitution so we are going to take our u to be pi minus x that is this factor here we differentiate both sides our du is going to give us negative dx now we change the limits our x is beginning from pi on 2 right up to pi so x begins from pi on 2 to pi now what about u our u is equal to pi minus x so when x is equal to pi on 2 our u is equal to pi minus pi on 2 which is pi on 2 when x is equal to pi here our u is equal to pi minus pi which is zero so we have succeeded to get the new limit of the um, variable u so we are going to be integrating now from pi on 2 right up to zero and we are going to be dealing with the variable u since we have changed the variable from x to u okay so it means that our integral i1 is going to be equal to here is there is an equal sign omitted so integral um, i1 is is going to give us now in the place of 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 x we are going to replace it with pi minus u and then we multiply with n now in the place of pi minus x we are going to replace it with u now i'm replacing x with pi minus u because if u is equal to pi minus x we can look for x and x is going to give us pi minus u now we are integrating from pi on 2 right up to 0 now in the place of dx we are going to replace it with negative du because if you look for dx here you're going to get negative du that's why you see this negative sign outside here like i said i omitted an, equal, an equality sign here so it needs to be included all right so it means that we are going to get we use our same property we switch the limits of integration and the negative sign disappears so we are now integrating from zero right up to pi on two not pi on two to zero because we have um we have made the negative sign to vanish so integral from zero to pi on two we remember our factor two over pi is c outside our u here and then the sign we can multiply here by n here you're going to get n pi minus n u now we are integrating with respect to u now we are going to use a definition which says the sine of a minus b is equal to the sine of a the cos of b minus the cos of a the sine of b so with that we can distinguish or we can um we can simplify the sine of n pi minus n u so the sine of n pi minus n u we see that our a is n pi and then our b is n u so it gives us the sine of n pi the cos of n u minus the cos of n pi the sine of n u okay so we know that the sine of n pi is always zero since n is in the set of natural numbers so at the end we are just going to be left with negative the cos of n pi times the sine of n u the question is what is the cos of n pi all right so we are going to see a clear definition of what the cos of n pi is now the cos of n pi let us analyze it together if n is an even number we are going to get for example let's the cos of 2 pi the cos of 2 pi or let's begin with 0 the cos of 0 is 1 the cos of 2 pi is 1 the cos of 4 pi is also 1 the cos of 6 pi and so on is 1 so the cos of n pi is equal to 1 if n is equal to 2k meaning an even number now what about if n is an odd number we are going to get negative 1 so the cos of n pi for example let's say n equals 1 the cos of pi is negative 1, the cos of 3 pi is negative 1, the cos of 5 pi is negative 1, and so on and so forth. So the cos of n pi is equal to negative 1, provided your n is an odd number. So we can clearly say that the cos of n pi is the same as negative 1 raised to the power n. So when n is equal to an even number, we are going to get 1. For example, when n is 0, we have 1. When n is 2, we have 1. When n is 4, we have 1. But if n is an odd number we get negative one for example when n is one we have negative one to the power one when n is three we have negative one to the power three so it's negative one 
so it means that the cos of n pi is negative 1 raised to the power n that's a standard definition of it because it alternates between negative 1 and 1 depending on um, the parity of n all right so it means that the sine of n pi minus um, nu is equal to negative which is original negative sign in front of here now the cos of n pi is negative 1 raised to the power n then times the sine of nu all right so from the previous informations that we have had we have um, our i of 1 to be that integral and then we, previ we previously found out what the sine of n pi minus nu is equivalent to this is equivalence so with that our i1 i just replace the sine of n pi minus nu with its equivalence and then since this equivalence this part is not in function of u we can call it a constant so we pull it out of the integral so we have now i1 to be equal to this integral now our a of n of f was equal to this whole integral where our i1 is this second integral so with that we just replace i1 this second integral with the equivalence we get this but x and u are dummy variables it means that the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of u times the sine of nu du is the same as the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of x times the sine of nx dx if you do it you get the same response at the end so with that we just um, replace your u here with x and then you get your a of n of f to be equal to this integral but we see that the first integral we have um, the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of x times the sine of nx the x and the second integral c has um, same integral so we can factor it out and then we factoring out from the first term you're going to be left with remember 2 divided by pi is also common so we actually factoring out 2 divided by pi times that integral the first term you're just going to be left with 1 and then the second term you're going to be left with negative times negative 1 raised to the power n so it means our a of n of f is equal to 2 divided by pi times 1 minus negative 1 to the power n times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of x times the sine of nx dx which is what we were required to prove All right, so next we are deducing the value of a of 2n of f. Okay, so with our previous knowledge concerning a of n of f, we have this. So to get a of 2n of f, we just replace your n here with 2n. So it means this a of 2n of f is equal to 2 divided by pi into 1 minus negative 1 raised to the power 2n this time around and not raised to the power n because we are finding a of 2n of f all right then times this integral so let us analyze what negative 1 raised to the power 2n is negative 1 raised to the power 2n is the same as negative 1 raised to the power 2 or that raised to the power n the loss of indices to so get back this second term here you just multiply the powers so negative 1 squared is 1 then you raise it to the power n but 1 raised to the power n is equal to 1 so it means that your a of 2n of f is equal to all of this but 1 minus 1 is 0 so it means that your a of 2n of f is equal to 0 and that is the deduction all right so we are going to proceed with the next part of the equation it says show that for any integer small n a of 2n plus 1 of f is equal to 4 times negative 1 raised to the power n all divided by pi times 2n plus 1 all that squared okay so with that we are going to first of all begin by displaying the previous informations that we had so we have a of n of f to be equal to um, this quantity here so first of all we are going to look for a of 2n plus 1 meaning anywhere we see n we replace it with 2n plus 1 so it means that a of 2n plus 1 of f is equal to everything that you see here i just replace n here with 2n plus 1 i replace n here with um 2n plus 1 all right so with that we can 
um, analyze what negative 1 raised to the power 2 n plus 1 is negative 1 raised to the power 2 n plus 1 is the same as negative 1 raised to the power 2 n times negative 1 to simplify this you just add the power since you have the same basis now negative 1 here here is a negative sign then negative 1 raised to the power 2 n is the same as negative 1 raised to the power 2 or that raised to the power n so at the end we get negative 1 raised to the power n which is negative 1 so with that we just replace this here with negative 1 and then um, you're, you're going to get 1 plus 1 here which gives you 2 then times this 2 you get 4 so it means your a of 2n plus 1 of f is 4 divided by pi times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of x times the sine of 2n plus 1 times x all right so some brief analysis um, we are going to carry on a very brief analysis so make sure you pay attention now we are going to first of all integrate this function by parts because we identify a function of a function here we have x times the sine of 2n plus 1 times x now since my x is easily differentiable um, um i'm going to let my u to be x du by dx is going to give me 1 and then my dv gives me the sine of 2n plus 1 times x dx and then my v now it means i'm integrating this function so to integrate the sine function i have negative 1 divided by the derivative of the angle then times the cosine of the angle the angle here is 2n plus 1 times x so doing that just get your v to be this now the integration by parts formula says that your integral will be equal to now you have your 4 divided by pi which is outside now what you do is that you take your u times your v then minus the integral of your v times your du your du is 1 so it means that um, your your the, the next integral will bear just v now let's begin with uv our u is x and our v is negative 1 divided by 2n plus 1 times the cosine of 2n plus 1 times x here is it now you need to fit your limits of integration from 0 right up to pylon 2 that's it from 0 right up to pylon 2 then in the original formula it is minus the integral of v du your du is 1 so you're just integrating v with respect to x but since there is a minus sign in the original formula and there is a minus sign with v we now get a positive sign now your v is this quantity 1 over 2n plus 1 is a constant you pull it out of the integral and then you're just left with cos x cos of 2n plus 1 times x and you're integrating with respect to x now let us simplify first of all this like fitting the upper limits and the lower limits and see what you are going to get now clearly when you fit your lower limit you're going to get zero because fitting zero here everything boils boils down but when you fit your upper limit what do you get that is the equation all right so when you fit your upper limit x being pylon 2 what do you get let's analyze together you you're going to fit x to be pylon 2 here quite all right now fitting x to be pylon 2 here let's just say your um 2n plus 1 is k so we are analyzing um fitting x to be pylon 2 here it means that the cosine function here is going to be the cosine of 2n plus 1 times pylon 2 so i'm just going to take a general case of looking for the cosine of k times pi divided by 2 so the cosine of k times pi divided by 2 will give us zero if k is an odd number because the cosine of odd multiples of pylon 2s is zero but it is going to give us negative 1 raised to the power k if k is an even number like we even saw it earlier so if k here is equal to 2 times n it means that replacing k with 2 times n this interior here just becomes n pi which is what we saw earlier negative 1 raised to the power k so that is it so it means in this case since it is an odd multiple of pi on 2 because the integral angle here is 2n plus 1 times pi on 2 but 2n plus 1 is always an odd number so the interior is an odd multiple of pi on 2 hence the cosine of that odd multiple of pi on 2 will always give you zero so it means that this term here boils down to zero so in conclusion we can say our a of 2n plus 1 of f is equal to 4 divided by pi times this integral now we are left to integrate this guy here and then we multiply with 1 divided by 2n plus 1 and then later with 4 divided by pi 
all right so clearly to integrate the cosine of 2n plus 1 we take 1 divided by the derivative of the integral then times the sine of 2n plus 1 times x and we fit our limit of integration our 4 divided by pi is our constant is outside our 1 divided by 2n plus 1 is also a constant which is outside now differentiating 2n plus 1 times x we just get um 2n plus 1 that's it we find in the denominator then times the sine of 2n plus 1 times x now we need to verify by fitting the upper limit and the lower limit clearly when you fit the lower limit which is zero the interior here is going to give you zero and the sine of zero is clearly zero so the lower limit gives you zero what about the upper limit now the upper limit you're fitting x with pile on two so at the end you're expected to find the sign of odd multiples of pile on two what does it give let us analyze together as well so i'm just going to find uh, let me just say the 2n plus 1 is k in the general case so the sign of of k multiples of pile on 2 is negative 1 raised to the power k not n sorry it is negative 1 raised to the power k if k is odd and then it is 0 if k is even if k is even it means that here you're going to get um 2 you're going to get your your k to be 2n you see so 2n pi divided by 2 is pile n so the sign of multiples of piles is zero but now when k is odd you're always going to get the sign of multiples of piles on twos which is going to give you negative one raised to the power n because it's going to be alternating as k as k changes value so it means that our a of 2n plus 1 of f is equal to 4 divided by pi now i'm going to multiply this and this it gives us 1 over 2n plus 1 all that squared and then this guy here gives us negative 1 raised to the power n so which is what was required to prove because if we multiply our 4 in the numerator multiply with this in the numerator and then we divide by 2n plus 1 all squared we are just going to dive you're just going to get the proof directly all right guys so if the video is interesting endeavor to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet if you're facing a difficulty with um understanding a certain explanation do well to comment in the comment section so that we can know how to um, give you a text explanation to what you have not understood all right guys so the last but not the least part of our exercise two to end the video so it is admitted that for any real number x your capital f of x is equal to the infinite sum beginning from zero of a of n of f times the sine of nx we are asked to show that the in the infinite sum beginning from zero of one divided by two n plus one all squared is equal to pi squared divided by eight so previously um here is a definition that i've given us but previously we had that a of 2n plus 1 of f is equal to 4 times negative 1 raised to the power n divided by pi times 2n plus 1 all squared so for me to prove this i need to do a relationship between this um, sum here and a of 2n plus 1 because i can find out 2n plus 1 all squared in this um, in this proof that we proved earlier so from here simply for all values of n this works it means that if n is odd or n is even it works so we are, i'm just going to do this i'm going to replace n here with 2n plus 1 so in the place of n here i'm going to i'm also going to replace it with, replace it with 2n plus 1 because it works always all right so this time around i'm going to replace your our a of 2n plus 1 of f with the equivalence that we had previously so this is it then now times the sine of 2n plus 1 times x that's what we get all right so um originally in the equation our f of our capital f of x was a piecewise function it was x if x is between 0 and pile on 2 0 will be included and it is pile minus x if pile on 2 is less than x less than pile pile on 2 is included so for our capital f of x equal to pi minus x because this equation i can call it equation one and then um this maybe 
capital f of x equal to x equation 2 and then capital f of x equal to pi minus x equation 3 since um capital f of x is unique it means that this guy here is either is equal to x for x in the interval 0 to pi on 2 and it is also equal to pi minus x for x in the interval pi on 2 to pi since here we have capital f of x and this is still capital f of x so i'm just going to take the scenario when it is equal to pi minus x so if it is equal to pi minus x it means that pi minus x is equal to all of this sum because this sum is also our capital f of x now for it to be pi minus x then i can take x to be pi because my x values here ranges from pi on 2 right up to pi sorry you can take x to be pi on 2 because x can be pi on 2 here our our aim here is to prove that this sum is equal to pi squared divided by 8 so first of all i need to look for a way to eliminate this x from here because i can already find this sum here you see so if i try my best to eliminate x from here then i can get something good so if i let our x to be um and clearly previously we had this scenario where we we distinguish what the sine of 2n plus 1 times pi on 2 is we saw it so we can let x to be pi divided by 2 because if f of x is pi minus x x can take pi divided by 2 that's why it is convenient for us to take x to be pi divided by 2 now the left hand side you just get pi minus pi divided by 2 and in the right hand side you're going to get all this sum and then in the place of x we, we fit pi divided by 2 okay previously we saw that um, the sine of 2n plus 1 pi divided by 2 was negative 1 raised to the power n so we just replace it here and then we multiply negative 1 raised to the power n times negative 1 raised to the power n the same basis we add the powers n plus n is 2n the left hand side is pi minus pi on 2 which is just giving us pi divided by 2 so it means we have our pi divided by 2 to be equal to all of this sum now um i explained this earlier and also we also saw this earlier negative 1 raised to the power 2n is equal to 1 so with that it means that our pi divided by 2 this quantity here is 1 so we get pi divided by 2 to be the infinite sum beginning from 0 of 4 divided by pi times 2n plus 1 all squared the 4 divided by pi is a constant so we can pull it out of the integral and then we cross multiply at once we divide by 4 and then we multiply by pi so we send pi to this um, numerator here and then we send 4 to the denominator here so pi times pi in the numerator 2 times point the denominator to be equal to the required sum so it means that the yeah, numerator here we get pi squared the denominator we get 8 so it means the sum the infinite sum from 0 right up to infinity of 1 divided by 2n plus 1 all squared is equal to pi squared divided by 8 which is what we were required to prove all right so for the last part of exercise 2 we are asked to deduce two things the first thing is that we should deduce that the infinite sum beginning from 1 of 1 divided by n squared is equal to pi squared divided by 6 i believe we can identify that infinite sum as a p series and we have been told that the p series converges and yes it converges to pi squared divided by 6 and uh, we are also supposed to deduce that the infinite sum beginning from 1 of negative 1 raised to the power n minus 1 divided by n squared is equal to pi squared divided by 12. Okay, so deducing means that we are going to use the previous informations that we have had to um, find these various sums. Okay, so we are first, first of all going to start by deducing the first one which is the infinite sum beginning from 1 of 1 divided by n squared as pi squared divided by 6 now we are going to write down this form as what it says so the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 on n squared is 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared plus 1 over 6 squared and so on and so forth okay so this is how we are going to group group them together we are going to group the odd terms and then the even terms together so grouping the odd terms you have 1 over 1 squared is just 1 we take it with 1 over 3 squared we take it with 1 over 5 squared and so on and so forth and then grouping the even squares 
we begin with one over two squared so one over two squared one over four squared one over, one over six squared and so on and so forth okay so now this um denominators here which are odd we are going to write it um in terms of twos so three can be written as two into one plus one five can be written as two into two plus one if we went to seven we are going to get two into three plus one and then all of all of that is squared next um here we are going to factorize out half squared so factoring out half squared from this bracket we have half squared if you remove half squared from the first term you're going to be left with one if you remove half squared from the second squared from the second term you're going to be left with half squared if you remove it from the third term you're going to be left with one third squared and so on and so forth now we can clearly identify that this first sum here is the sum from zero to infinity of one over two n plus one all squared clearly because um the denominator does the, the sum of re reciprocals of the sum of the squares of reciprocals of odd numbers and uh, this one in this bracket here is the sum of does um this sum here on the left hand side that is the infinite sum beginning from one of the of the squares of the reciprocals of of numbers okay so our half squared is there now this here is the infinite sum beginning from one to infinity of one over n squared okay so you're just going to subtract this guy here is one quarter so i take it to the left hand side and then the, la the right hand side stays the same now if you subtract the left hand side you are going to get four three divided by four not four divided by three so here's supposed to be three divided by four so three divided by four times the sum from n equal to one to infinity of one over n squared to be equal to all of this okay so it means that um, this sum now is going to give us 3 divided by 4. 4 divided by 3 this time around. Because here is 3 divided by 4. So you cross multiply. You send the 3 here and then you divide by 4. So it gives us 4 divided by 3. So this sum which we are looking for is now 4 divided by 3 times this sum. But in the previous, um, previous explanation, that's the previous question we had this sum as pi squared divided by 8 so clearly we can deduce that our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is 4 divided by 3 times pi squared divided by 8 which is um, our 4 can go here one time and can go here two times so the denominator is 3 times so which is 6 so it's pi squared divided by 6 so our deduction is perfect okay let us move on to the second deduction we are deducing that the infinite sum beginning from 1 of of negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n squared is pi squared divided by 12. Okay, so let us try to write down this the terms of this series to see um, what is happening. So when n is equal to 1, the first term is 1. When n is 2, the next term is negative 1 over 2 squared. When n is 3, you have 1 over 3 squared. When n is 4, you have negative 1 over 4 squared and so on and so forth. So we see that when um the for the, when a term is an odd number it is positive and when it is um an even that's when the denominator is even it is negative when the denominator is odd it is positive so we can rewrite it this way we group the odds and then we group the evens all the odds are positive so we begin from one we go to three we go to five we go to seven and so on but now for the evens they are negative so negative 1 on 2 squared, negative 1 on 4 squared, negative 1 on 6 squared, and so on and so forth. Now, from this term here, we can factor out all the negative signs together with um, 1 over 2 squared. Because removing 1 over negative 1 over 2 squared from everything here, the first term you'll be left with 1, the second term you'll be left with 1 over 2 squared, the third term 1 over 3 squared, and so on. So that's what we get. So it means that we just remove um, the negative 1 over 2 squared. And integrally, we are going to get 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on and so forth. Now, we rewrite back this expanded as closed forms of the sums. So, the left-hand side is equal to this guy here is just the equivalence, which is this. And then now you have your minus 1 quarter and then times this. Okay. Since we have uh, we have this guy already is pi squared on 8 and then we have this guy is pi squared on 6, 
times 1 quarter pi squared on 24. If we simplify correctly, we get pi squared divided by 12. So in conclusion, we have that that infinite sum of negative 1 to n minus 1 divided by n squared is pi squared divided by 12. So we have, um, we have deduced correctly the two deductions that we were supposed to make. Okay, so guys, that is that about the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do well to subscribe to the channel. I repeat, if you have not subscribed yet, like the video, very important if the video is good. Make comments about the video that so we know how to improve on our on our explanations. Also comment your areas of difficulty where you don't understand so that we can provide you with a text explanation. Stay tuned for the next video, um, probably maybe um, the other questions in Polytechnic Duala 2021. If you want us to solve the other questions, you also um, write your comment that you want us to solve the other questions and indicate the problem you want us to solve so that we uh, we have vectored because you know a vector has magnitude and direction so we should not be a scalar we should be vectorized so endeavor to tell us the particular question you want us to solve if we don't have the question we are going to ask you to send us the question okay so see you guys in the next video and good luck for your examinations